During the second half of the 20th century, the UK was one of the main players of the global arms industry. From 1971 onwards, the country sold several hundred chieftain MBTs to Iran, and in 1974, the British secured a contract to supply Iran with even a more advanced combat vehicle. In order to satisfy the terms of that contract, British engineers developed the Shir-1, a special export version of the Chieftain equipped with a new fire control system and a new 1,200 horsepower Rolls-Royce engine. The original plan was to eventually phase it out with the heavily modernized Shir-2, protected by Chobamama. But as British factories were getting ready to start the full-scale production of the vehicle, an unexpected factor came into play. Iran had its revolution. The two countries were suddenly not on speaking terms anymore, and the agreement was effectively void. In theory, that would translate into catastrophic losses for the British tank industry, as millions of pounds had already been spent on the development of the new vehicle. But luckily, the tank found a new market at home. In the late 1970s, it was high time the British military received a new generation of tanks, but the development of the MBT-80 turned out to be significantly more expensive than expected. That's why the British government decided to roll with the punches and work with the slightly modified Shear 2 instead. The new MBT was accepted into service as the Challenger. The first thing that set the Challenger apart from other contemporary designs was its armament. This MBT was the only tank of its generation to use a rifled gun, the reliable L11 cannon. The team that developed the Challenger decided to go with it because it allowed the employment of a widest range of ammunition, including the British favorite, the Hesch round. At the same time, the tank turned out to be pretty heavy, with its weight going up to 62 tons. That's almost 10 tons heavier than the first models of the Abrams or the Leopard 2. It was certainly a very robust design because the Challenger was clearly not without flaws. For instance, the tank performed pretty poorly at the Canadian Army Trophy competition in 1987 as the Royal Hussars struggled with the thermal observation and gunnery sight and some other teething problems of the new British MBT. In the end, the Challenger had a lower score than both the Leopard 1 or the Chieftain in the previous competition. A few years later, when the tank saw its first combat in the Gulf War, it was reportedly still very prone to breaking down. On the other hand, the Challenger was undeniably very effective in actual combat. Among other things, it managed to score the longest operational kill against another tank in history. The Challenger of Captain Ting Purbrick knocked out an Iraqi tank with an APF SDS round at 4,700 meters. This record remains undefeated to this day. But time stops for no one, and soon the British started to withdraw the MBT. After the last Challenger Mark III's with additional armor were shipped to Jordan, the story of the first Challenger ended, and the British were ready to work on the successor vehicle. The MOD started officially looking for a replacement in 1987. There were defense companies from the US, Germany and Brazil competing for the contract, but in the end, it was awarded to Vickers Defense Systems, an iconic British manufacturer. To satisfy all the criteria, they suggested a radical redesign of the first Challenger, creating a tank which we now know as the FV4034 Challenger 2. Despite looking strikingly similar to the previous model, the Challenger 2 shared no more than 3% of its components with the Challenger 1. The new MBT was fitted with new computerized systems, a new gun, a new engine, 
and a new transmission. Just as its predecessor, the Challenger II received a baptism fire in the Middle East during the Iraq War. This time, the hard work of British engineers fully paid off. As the tank could withstand multiple hits from handheld anti-tank rocket launchers and remained fully operational. Obviously, it wasn't completely immune to damage, but it was certainly very reliable, well protected and effective in combat. And that wasn't even its final form. As in the mid-2010s, the UK produced the Theatre Entry Standard variant, featuring additional protection against heat projectiles. Nowadays, there are further plans to make even more advanced model by outfitting the tank with a brand new turret and armament. This model is yet to come, but both existing challenges are available in War Thunder for you to play and enjoy. Which challenger do you prefer, by the way? And what do you think would have happened to this series if the Shah never fell? Tell us what you think in the comments below.